What's the next step for me if I've completed the PL300 Microsoft exam? Hello, I'm Philip Burton of idodata.com. So the PL300 exam by Microsoft gives you a very good foundation in Power BI, especially if you are a data analyst. So you'll be able to transform data, create data models, visualize data and share assets. So in more detail, you would be able to get data from data sources, clean the data and transform and load it. You'll be able to design and implement a data model and create model calculations by using DAX. You'll also be able to optimize the model performance, including by using the performance analyzer. You'll be able to create reports and enhance them for usability and storytelling. You'd also be able to identify patterns and trends, create and manage workspaces and items on the Power BI service, and manage semantic models, the new name for datasets. Now, this is far from a fundamentals level exam. So those are normally starting with the number 900. This is the PL300 and is fairly hefty. My PL300 course is about 28 hours long. So you will have had a really good foundation in Power BI. Now you've got this, what is your next step? Well, can I suggest you have a look at the Microsoft DP600? So this was launched around the end of 2023, start of 2024, and only became generally available in March, 2024. So this concentrates on Microsoft Fabric, but don't be fooled, a fair part of it is about Power BI and using the skills that you already have. So it's a lot easier now you've got the PL300 to transition to the DP600 than it would be to do something similar to the PL300 in a different field. So you would be responsible for semantic models and reports. So you've already done that. There's very little you need to learn in addition. There's some more advanced stuff, but you've already got all of the fundamentals there. You will also be looking at lake houses, data warehouses, notebooks, data floors, and data pipelines. However, it is at a, I would say, much lower level than you've had to do for the PL300. Yes, there's a fair bit of learning to do, but it's not as much as you've had to do for the PL300. So you need to have experience with data modeling. Check, you've already done that. Data transformation already done, and languages including tax, already done. So you will need a bit more. You will need to know about source control and SQL and PySpark. But let's concentrate on how you can develop your Power BI skills. So let's have a look at the DP600 study guide. So just a bit more than half, I would say, is about fabric, but you've got less than a half, maybe a third, all about Power BI. So let's have a look at it. First of all, we need to plan a data analytics environment. So that includes choosing a data gateway type. You should already know that from Power BI, the PL300, and you'll be creating a custom Power BI report theme. You'll then be implementing and managing a data analytics environment, including data sharing for workspaces, already know that, manage sensitivity labels, implement workspace and item level access controls. So these you already know. Manage the analytics development lifecycle includes create and manage a .pbip, a project file, and reusable assets, including a template file, a data source file, and shared semantic models, which you probably already know. Let's go past the prepare and serve data because that is mostly about lake houses and warehouses. But you'll notice that there are things including merging data, aggregating data, denormalizing data, converting data types and filter data. So everything that you know, except this is going to be in SQL or PySpark. And then we get back into Power BI. So implement and manage semantic models. So, so choose a storage mode. You'd already know about import and direct query, but there's one more for the fabric world, direct lake. 
Identify use cases for DAX Studio and Tabular Editor 2. So these are external programs that can be used in conjunction with the Power BI desktop. So you can see you can improve DAX performance by using DAX Studio and the Vertipack Analyzer and optimize a semantic model by using Tabular Editor 2. You should also have a look at the ALM toolkit as well. Implement a star schema for a semantic model. You probably already know about that. And implement relationships, though this goes one stage further than the PL300 does, including bridge tables and many-to-many -many relationships. Write calculations that use DAX variables and functions. So you'll know about iterator functions such as sum x, count x. You'll know about table filtering using calculate or filter. You'll know about information functions as well. Windowing might be new, variables might be new. Implement calculation groups. So suppose I wanted a year to date calculation, but I want to use multiple fields for that year to date calculation or year over year percentage calculation. Do I really have to write multiple measures, which are basically the same thing? It's just that the field name changes. No, you don't have to with a calculation group. And as of the October 2023, version of Power BI Desktop, Calculation Groups is now included as a preview. Implement dynamic strings, so maybe your measure won't have the same format each time. For example, maybe you're using a calculation group where sometimes it's a percentage as an answer. Or maybe you've got a sum of a figure, but sometimes it's US dollars, sometimes it's euros, sometimes it's yen. So dynamic strings allows you to be able to say, this is my custom output and field parameters. So allow the end user to choose what measure to use. Design and build a large format dataset or semantic model. So that's on the Power BI service. So that allows you to have semantic models greater than 10 gigabytes. Design and build composite models that include aggregations. So the good thing about direct query is you'll always have the latest data and you don't have to load all the data in right at the beginning. The bad thing about direct query is that if you do a sum, it will take ages potentially to get that data. Aggregations are pre-aggregated tables with the information. So that allows you to get summarized data more quickly ready in advance for the end user. You will already know about dynamic role level security. Object level security, that is something that you would use Tabular Editor 2 for. Optimize enterprise scale semantic models. Well, we've already had a look at DAX Studio and Tabular Editor 2, but we'll also be implementing incremental refresh. You should already know that from the Power BI PL300 exam and implement performance improvement in queries and report visuals. So we've had a look in the PL300 at the performance analyzer. So maybe we just need the next step. So we could have a look at the optimize menu, for example. And then finally, explore and analyze data. So we're looking at profiling data. So you know how to do that in the get and transform the Power Query window. There are some additional ways to do it in a notebook, for example, and integrate analytics into a visual or report. So again, you will have covered this in the PL300 and implement additional analytics, descriptive and diagnostic, again, already from the PL300. You will also be asked to query data by using SQL. So the XMLA endpoint is a way of opening up semantic models which are on the Power BI service so that you can query them using external programs such as Tabular Editor 2, DAX Studio or SQL Server Management Studio. Coming up, I'll show you how to get a practice exam for free for the DP600. So in my brand new course about the DP600 coming out in May 2024, there's around four hours of additional training about the Power BI service. So you can see we'd start off with creating a semantic model, talk about normalization and implementing a star schema, looking at calculation groups, field parameters and custom Power BI report themes, and then looking at DAX variables and the windowing functions. We'll then look at the external programs, so specifically Tabular Editor 2 and DAX Studio. We'll look at relationships and performance improvements using the optimized menu. 
Then we'll turn to the Power BI service, largely with the premium or premium per user workspace. So we'll be looking at the analytics development lifecycle on the Power BI service before having a look at some additional topics. So this is around four hours of additional training for the Power BI before we then start having a look at Fabric. So this course is coming out in May 2024 and it will be available on our website, idodata.com. Just go to the top and click on Fabric. So where can you get additional information about the DP600? Well, I suggest you go to the Microsoft page and then you can read all about it. There are also some Microsoft learning paths that you can work through as well. You can also go to the Microsoft Fabric Career Hub. And here you can see that there is a cloud skills challenge. So if you complete that, you'll get 50% off the exam and at the time of recording. And there are also some Microsoft Learn videos, but they basically are walkthroughs of the Microsoft Learn modules. So I wouldn't necessarily do both. However, there is also a useful practice test here, 50 sample questions to see if you are ready to take the DP600 exam. So this is the DP600. So it builds on what we have already learned for the PL300, adding advanced topics for Power BI Desktop and Power BI Service, and then adding some Microsoft Fabric. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, then why not click the like button and why not subscribe and click that bell? That way you'll be notified of any new videos. If you'd like more help with the DP600, then please go to our website, idodata.com and click on fabric at the top. I'm Philip Burton of idodata.com. Thanks for watching and keep learning.